Your Excellency, the Honorable Prime Minister of Bhutan, Dr. Lord Singh, Honorable Ministers of the Royal Government of Bhutan, Minister Jabir Rai, Minister of Home Affairs, Tashwishar Abkhelsin, Minister of Foreign Affairs, Dr. Tandindorji, Minister of Economic Affairs, Honorable Lokmat Sharma. Honorable Tashu Sirin Tokke, former Prime Minister of Bhutan. Rimboches, Venerables, Tashos, eminent monks, spiritual leaders, distinguished participants, eminent members of Bhutanese society and government. How fortunate we are this evening as organizers both of this, both Central Monastic Body and the Center for Bhutan Studies feel once again honored by your presence at the inauguration of the third Bajarama International Conference. In the invitation card for this evening, there was a mistake in communication. We had misprinted the occasion as dinner program, but this gathering is truly the inauguration of the conference because it is graced by His Excellency, the Prime Minister of Bhutan. Tomorrow we start straight away with a spiritualist general overview of the Vajrayana technique. Kenshin Khandu, an eminent master of the central monastic body, will give first talk because the Grand Master, Vajrayana Master of the central monastic body, Dorji Lopen, is still away presiding a Malam Chenpo in Tongsa. I am very pleased this evening, and I say this on behalf of the Central Monastic Body as well as Centre for Bhutan and GNH or Gross National Happiness Studies. This is my only opportunity to stand in front of you for the next three days. So I may if you allow me, take this opportunity to express three reasons for which I am very pleased. The first is, first reason is about this place, which is the library of mind, body and sound, where we are meeting for the next two, three days. Second reason I am very pleased this evening is to welcome all the participants from both within and outside the country. And the last reason for which I am very pleased and I wish to express is that His Excellency the Prime Minister has been able to forego another of his very important engagement this afternoon which should be actually taking place, but he is here and we are deeply honored. So it is for these three reasons and may I be allowed to elaborate. Your Excellency, Tashos, Eminent Monks, this conference, the first reason which I am, for which I am very pleased is that it is being held at Shichen Kar. You must have read the logo. Shichinkar is almost finished constructing and this is, we are yet to do the consecration. This is the first pre-consecration event. By the subject matter itself, it is very auspicious 
and I didn't want to hold it, this conference, anywhere else. The consecration of this Shishinkara will be conducted by His Holiness, the revered Tukujimi Choda, when he returns from one of his very frequent retreats in Eastern Bhutan. Maybe it will be held next month. We have named this structure Shishinkar, meaning the Great Fourth. Great Fourth Skar, in honor of the revered Fourth King of Bhutan, His Majesty Jimmy Singhi Wangshuk. And I hope that the infinite number of activities, I, I hope I am audible at the backside. Thank you. I hope that the infinite number of activities that will take place here in the future will be worthy of His Majesty the present and the past King's pure vision for this country. The ideation and approval of the construction of Shishinkar, which will house the library of mind, body and sound and many other things, as I will tell you a bit later, goes back to the last government that was headed by the former Prime Minister Basho Sering Toge. It was his bold courage and far-sightedness that brought about the resources for the construction over the last two years. Just before his term of office ended, he also came to see how far it was completed. And I am therefore very pleased this evening that former Prime Minister Dasha Sring Togge is amongst us this evening, right in front of us. For me and some of our staff, the construction process over the last two years became all-consuming, whether I was abroad or in the country, every day I tracked through mobile and gave my best instructions. We are very fortunate to get a contract contractor who was equally concerned about quality of building. We appreciate, I think it is a very momentous occasion for you all also to wish well the good contractor, Penjor Construction, who was very scrupulous, hardworking and quality minded. Maybe Penjor is somewhere here, if he could get up. In front of both the past and the present Prime Minister, there is Penjor over there. He told me that he has aged so fast because he is all the time worried of meeting the deadline. I think in a humble way we have tried to be human in our approach to construction. That no human being when he is inside a building miss the view of Himalayan landscape, the view of the liberating sky and clouds, that no human being is deprived of fresh air when he sits for work. This small things, I think, has been also at the forefront of our mind. I think all architecture are also human beings' desire to reach some meaning and some beauty behind functionality. I hope we have been able to complement the poetry and the majesty of the Bhutanese landscape. The site where we are just now itself, if you go to the window, overlooks two most haunting 
sites in this valley. What we see, and more and more clearly and uh, in a fantastic way as you go higher up, the bend of the Wangchu River as it loops the fortress of Tashi Chezong and as it passes the humble palace of His Majesty the King. And the second thing we see from here is the Thimpu cremation ground from where smoke billows almost daily into space with, along with intonation of chants. This building will house principally the library of mind, body and sound. And all of you who are extremely knowledgeable about Vajrayana Buddhism will know that this phrase draws from the view that the numerous experiences of human beings draw through the gateways of mind, body and sound. As you all know very well, human body is the very foundation of our experience and it can be potentialized through various mind-body practices of, including Salong Tikle. Both transformation and liberation occur only through mind-body practices in Vajrayana Buddhism. Speech or sound besides body is another gateway of experience. Sound of language, sound of nature, ultra, ultra sound, sound of wild animal, man-made sounds, charms, songs, mantras have tremendous bearing on our thought, perceptions and ultimately human beings. Our thinking is largely based, as you all know, on language. Whether we vocalize or not, even during silent thinking, language is involved. But in some Vajrayana method of contemplation, visualization is at the center. And our attention is directed at thangkas and visuals, topographies, during which at least we experience non-linguistic mode of being and our mind is free for that moment from language and its symbols. In terms of mind as the gateway of experience, the vision of course as you all know is to experience some kind of dharmakaya or Buddha nature which is a state of thoughtlessness. Of course, I don't use the word thoughtlessness in the English sense, I use it in the Buddhist sense. And I, we, we hope that at the deeper level, this building, this building will help all of us follow through the vision of Vajrayana to combat suffering and strengthen human potential through the three dimensions of human experiences. The library will not only be digital uh, uh, or contain physical books, it, its activities will encompass lectures, uh, Thimpu Riggs events, Riggs is the strategic uh, uh, institute, civil service training, conferences, dance, theater, music, artisanship, exhibition, studios, demonstrations, and many different types of curations. I also hope that all important largest scale meetings, I would like to particularly bring the attention of ministers to this, that from henceforth, all large scale meetings of the government will now onwards take place in Shishinkar. It in one hall like this, we can easily take 800 to 1,000 persons, very easily, and it can stretch even to 2,000. I also hope that it will be the intellectual communication and training hub for the various spokes of GNS, the spoke of psychological being, the spoke of 
culture, they spoke of education, health, and community vitality, and so forth. And I like to thank today, in front of all you eminent people, the present PM2, for the unstinting, unstinting and generous support for the development of library of mind, body, and sound. So this is by way of me expressing the joy about the venue of third Vajrayana conference as the first reason for me feeling very pleased. My second reason for feeling so pleased this evening is that all of you, especially from far, could come to the conference, which is also another type of retreat. And all good retreats are also advances, of course. Even for a fitting period of time, you have abandoned the comfort of your home and your own country. You have left behind, perhaps, your psychological baggage. To hear and receive some offering of Vajrayana Buddhism. I think the trend in the future will be to attend such crash courses in Vajrayana Buddhism before people hit their meditation mats in the urban flats. Since meditation caves, caves and hermitages will be increasingly out of reach for many people. As His Majesty the King, or His Majesty the King, always re reiterates in his public speeches, Bhutan has been a hidden land, blessed by Guru Rinpoche and by its founder, also a monk, the Shabdung Rinpoche. And that is why Bhutan could be a facilitative place to begin cultivation of many things, such as Dharma practice, Buddhist economics, values, gross national happiness, well-being, and so forth. The behavior of organizer of conference, any conference, resembles that of a housewife expecting guests in the evening. In the kitchen of the conference, where a recipe is made, the moment the housewife receives the guest is also the moment of her deliverance for that day. And we feel similar mood this evening. Led by Dr. Dolji Penjo, my deputy in the CBS, and Jimmy Pinso, the staff of our small office, has been a bit like Bajrayana commandos in organizing logistics and itinerary of the conference. And this is the first conference where I withdrew from detail management. And I'm very so happy to see that they can carry on as we phase out gradually. And they have been also attentive to details. I think details and vision has to always go together. People do simply espouse big visions but cannot handle tactical details, uh, usually fail. I'm uh, very glad to see that they took care of small details, seizing the moment of blossoming of some 30 species of rhododendron that colors the Dochula mountain some 30 minutes away. They have also been thoughtful enough to include a program for you to enjoy the Dodododendron Park day after, uh, on the morning of 21st. My last and third reason for feeling pleased this evening is really that I am able to welcome His Excellency, the Prime Minister of Bhutan, into our midst. As I as you all will appreciate, the opportunity cost of his time is extremely high. It is his first visit to this precinct. 
and I hope that he will find time to visit Shishinkar as much as he can later on to grace many activities that are planned. There is urban well-being, urban well-being conference that will take place here on 15th, 16th and 17th in May 2019, just a month later. And possibly we will be also holding, most probably, 90% likely, a conference on values East and West in October 2019. But it's just not to grace these things, but also to conduct training, conference, policies, uh, discussions in this uh, place. In a professional sense, His Excellency Dr. Lotte is amongst what you can call the cream of the Himalayas. Earlier the cream used to be always lamas, but now you have other one. Born in May 1969, he became a brilliant student, decorated by a gold medal in his final school years. And then, at the end of his school years, he was spurred by his wish to be directly beneficial to the people. And so he joined the course to become a medical doctor. And this he did in Dhaka University in Bangladesh. He was there for 11 long years. First training as a medical doctor and then as a general surgeon. Because of his stay in Bangladesh, he is one of the very few people in this country who can speak eloquently Bengali or Bangla. <laughs> Thus he belongs to this community who speaks the sixth most important language, sixth most important language by number of speakers. He worked as a surgeon for some years before he went to specialize in urology in Wincosin Medical College Hospital in the United States of America between 2007 and 2008. And then on return he worked for half a dozen years before he once again studied this time MBA. This is a good preparation for management of the country in Canberra University in Australia. Ever since he returned, he has been a surgeon at our National Referral Hospital. And he is still, despite being the Prime Minister of this country, a part-time surgeon. Some of our staff told me that they come across him rushing uh, at a slightly high, higher speed than allowed by the rules to the hospital on Saturday morning. At the same time, he heads or has headed the mobile emergency medical unit that organizes mobile clinic under the auspices of His <coughs> Majesty's Secretariat. I feel I need to mention this because he been always involved in wider uh, scope of works than just being a surgeon or a doctor. For all his devotion to his calling, he was decorated with one of the highest orders of this country, the Druk Thukse, or the Hot Sun of Bhutan, in 2017. That is one year well before he joined politics 
or he indicated his interest in mass mobilization for campaign. Then last year, within a brief period, he led his party to success. The party was much older and founded by Honorable Foreign Minister Dr. Tandindorji over there. Also another doctor managing the health of the relationship with foreign countries. <laughs> so he led his the party to victory or success. Having done that, he is now no longer a surgeon of human organs only now. Now he is a surgeon of the entire society. In one of his interviews in the Quinsel, uh, it was very pleasing to read, uh, also with some irony, that His Excellency sees all Bhutanese as his patients. <laughs> We already feel, however, jokes aside, the pulse of his examination and the new measures to make our society healthier and happier. And you will also feel the impact of that. Throughout our conference, we have opted for one of his advices, that is uh, plant-based food only. So it is a great moment for the Institute, for the conference, for all of us now to invite His Excellency to address uh, the gathering, Your Excellency. <laughs>